この番組はご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りしますオーライディ、ウォーカムエブリワン、アイムティアブウ、アイムヒューフォーモーブルスーツゼータガンダムエピソード27スターティングウィッエピソード27ああ、ランデヴューウィッシャー、ファイナリーウィッピーミーティングアップアゲン、フェリーグッド We have got a lot to do today and not, not a lot of time. I made a promise. I said that I would record multiple episodes of Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam, and I planned to keep that motherfucking promise. Or at least I planned to until I fell back asleep today, and now it's like three hours later, and I'm an idiot. But we're still going to do it. We just don't have a ton of time, and、oh, we still have enough time. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I just feel. You know that feeling when you wake up late and you're like, everything it gets all anxious, and you're like, oh shit, I gotta. I gotta move, I gotta do stuff, even though you're in a sort of half delirious, tired state as well. And it's like, ah, that's where I'm at. I don't know if you actually know what I'm talking about, but I'm trying to convey it as well as I can. We're gonna watch Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam episode 27. There is one event in the past couple episodes of Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam that I remember with clarity, and that is motherfucking Yazan. Ah, well, that's your own ship, bro. What? Yazan pulled the craziest move that we have seen from anybody in Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam. It's the craziest move in Gundam since Char blowing up the, the, the zombies and、uh, the lady. I, I don't even remember her name. Fucking amazing. And now, this from Yazan, the most amazing move, the most interesting thing. He just actively, knowingly, by choice, put himself in between Emma Sheen's big old gun blaster thing. And the bridge where Jamaican was chilling and exploded the fuck out of one of the commanding officers of the,、uh, of the Titans. Holy macaroni. What a move. What an absolute move. What an absolute unit. <clears throat> I went into the last pair of episodes thinking that Yazan was budget fucking knockoff Jared. And I was so fucking wrong. He's his own deal. And he is a problem, and he is great, and I love him. I think I might love him. I, I assume that he's going to get exploded in a couple of episodes, probably because that's what happens to characters. But right now, I'm excited to see what other crazy shenanigans this semi renegade dude is going to get up to. I'm also really interested to find out what effect the death of Jamaican has on the Tetons. Now, the Tetons, I, I know. People are going to laugh at the Tetons thing, but that's the way that the Japanese voice actors say it, and that's the way that I'm going to keep saying it because they'd say it that way. Jamaican was a pretty core leader. Now, I see the Tetons as pretty monolithic, like they're going to be capable of replacing him with someone just as bad or worse. And my question, my curiosity is is that person going to be Siroko?、Uh, I know it's Siroko, but, but seriously, Siroko's been like. Mm, not vying for position exactly, but butting heads with Jamaican for a few episodes now. And I think this gives an amazing opportunity for like a bit of weird consolidation of power within the Tetons under somebody who might be far more dangerous, actively dangerous, even though Jamaican was a dick and sucked. T- Sirocco is competent and way more dangerous, I think, than, than Jamaican. If he gets to move up because of this shuffle of power, that's going to be bad for the AU as a whole, I think. And that's pretty fucking interesting, I think. So, whatever happens, I'm really interested in seeing the unexpected results of Yazan's seemingly undercalculated move. Because while it's a cool fucking piloting move and, and a really cool maneuver, And a fucking awesome piece of narrative. It, as a move on the chessboard, it's like he just took his own king or, or took his own queen because the game isn't over or whatever. He's like a knight who can move unexpectedly and he just moved unexpectedly and took his own rook or something, something strong and powerful. I don't know what. But he, he just fucked some things up. And that's going to be really interesting because we're about to find out what kind of game of chess we're really playing. Is this standard rules where that's going to be a bad idea? Or is this something interesting where by taking that piece, he like, generates a new, more powerful piece? Which, by the way, makes me think that a cool game of meta chess where you can take your own pieces and upgrade them by doing so. Like, you know, you use a knight to take a pawn and you combo a knight and a pawn and you get like. A knight with retainers and stuff, and the knight charges into battle with pawns or some bullshit and it changes the mechanics. Sounds so interesting to me. That sounds so interesting, right? 
Holy shit. Mix, if you know, you mix a knight with a bishop and the knight gets one extra square in both directions that it can move and like becomes way more versatile. Oh, that's such a cool idea. All right, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. I, I went into that just trying to create an analogy. This is what I'm talking about. Like, this is because of the falling asleep and waking up. I'm, all, I'm still in a semi-lucid, semi-creative gray state between sleep and awakeness. So forgive me if I go rambly and talk about bullshit. I'll I'll phase into reality over the course of uh over the course of time. Ugh. Okay. So that's the biggest thing on my mind. There was some other interesting stuff. There were some ripples of Xeon stuff because we landed on a Xeon ship and did some things in there. Um there were I don't know. That's about all I remember really. Cool. That sets us up for episode 27 of Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam Rendezvous with Char. I mean, it says it says it on the tin. We're going to meet up with Char, or at least try to. I think we're going to uh, succeed, probably. And, uh, yeah, I don't know what else is going to happen there. Don't know how Char's going to be doing after watching Commodore Blex die. I mean, Char's seen people die, but that was his charge, right? That was his, his war. Could be interesting. Okay, let's go ahead and turn our attention to it and give it a watch. I've got episode 27 up and ready to go. It's zero seconds. There will be two versions. Picture in picture in the description. Timer on YouTube. Beep beep time to catch you down. Early access on the Patreon and beep beep timer. Let's get into it. Fully flat expression. Lovely. Oh, so sick. Zoom. Still wonder what that sparkly stuff is supposed to be. Oh, boy. Hmm. So we're going to explain it now. Devise the plan. Sure. Sure. He did? Yeah, casually chilling in space. Having a nice time. Drinking a margarita. <laughs> Holy shit. Come here. I don't know. Oh my god, it's the worst. God. <laughs> Shut up, I know it. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> Not the most helpful, but honestly kind of helpful. Just sort of, you'll learn. Don't worry about it, man.
Good idea. Okay. Okay, so we got to make it through to get that geostationary orbiting uh, shuttle where Char will be. Cool. <clears throat> oh. Separate Fa and... <laughs> Everybody fucking knows. Nope. Good good self self-awareness to be aware of that. Oh, it's because we're getting Char back this episode. Oh shit, this guy's still alive! Oh, only the bridge got destroyed? The whole thing didn't explode? Oh, hi! Mawa! Okay, so that's Captain Gaddy. Alzon's here too? Gate of Zidane? Abawaku. Uh, Probably Yazan. Okay, Captain Gaddy. Gate of Z Zedam. Zedan. Abawaku. And I'm gonna bet that this is Yazan taking a spin in a in a mobile suit. What? He's throwing them out? <laughs> They're gonna be rivals! Yes! Oh, I'm so into this! Whoa, what? He is. <laughs> what? Wow, yes, I'm such a such a dick. <laughs> well, you came for Jared. Yeah, I know. Oh, never mind. That was actually that was actually not what I expected to be the answer. Rough. Interesting thought. Gaddy Captain is just so weird. Because you're here, yeah. Yeah, there it is. That's what I was waiting for. Moa. Uh-huh. Whoa, we're gonna make out of the hallway? Let's go! Okay, well, she's gonna die now. What the fuck? I don't think Jared will, but I do think she will. To go get killed. <laughs> to go get killed. Oh. Uh. Oh no, that's so much worse. <laughs> She's super gonna die, and he's not gonna be able to protect her, right? I don't wanna- I don't wanna be that guy, but she's fucking dead. She just died. RIP. Okay, I'm gonna write down, Mauer is dead. Or Mauer is kill. <laughs> Big ol' burger. Uh 
Oh. Oh, for the split up. There she is. Oh. Wow, Camillo. I wonder why we always get in a fight. Maybe because I treat her like shit. <laughs> Fucking cat, stay. Stay, motherfucker. I don't believe you, cats. I don't believe you. Okay. Hmm. Wow. Just going out, going for it himself. This fucking guy. Okay, hi. He's taking children to space? For what reason? Hmm. That makes sense. Just saying it right out. Mm hmm. Mm. Mm. That makes sense. <laughs> Absolutely. It'll work on both fronts. Fear does that. Yeah, there's that idea again. And does he want to? That voice sounds okay. Never mind. Does the voice does sound familiar? I wonder who that who that voice actress was. And also the axis. Sweet. All right, here we go. Halfway through. There's our mid-roll. Okay, mid-roll and into battle for the rest of the episode, I expect. So, Jared squad. Fucking Yazan squad. Argama, Radish. Here we go. Awesome. Go after the small fries. Wow, 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 wow. All right, got plant. I guess that's what we want. Distract him away. Hmm.
Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Just so much faith. That's pretty rad. <laughs> God, he looks awful. Left Jared in, in charge. Weird. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure why they're not launching. I guess because they haven't seen it yet. I haven't gotten to the rendezvous point yet. Bam, Nemo down. Okay, there they go. All right, Fa, go one direction. Zeta gonna go the other direction. Okay, Jared's team is go. So Jared, Mauer, and Sarah? Yep, with the, me the mega ultra beam cannon thing. Completely immobile? Okay, fair enough. Okay, so we get two different types of leadership and uh, stuff. Yazan and Jared. She's so dead. Maybe not today. Maybe not tomorrow. Fuck. What is that? Not damaged. A retrofitted hijack. And she's the only one who's noticed it so far, I think. This thing's gonna be cool. Oh, it connects! So it's using the second hijack as a power source? Don't shoot it with the big gun. What? What was that? What was that? What did cats just experience? Oh! Uh, Nani! I was about to get this bitch! What? Come on! <laughs> Zoom! Wow, that was sick! You were specifically told not to come out here unless you were told to come out here. That's not an explanation, but okay. Chick, chick. Zoom. Up. Oh. There they are. Oh, and the boat. Wow, it looks like the, the like van from uh, from Spaceballs. Okay, shuttle goes bye bye. We see it. Yeah, don't, no doing your best. That's fucking Char. You get that goddamn boat. You get that goddamn boat. Wow. More. <laughs> No. Nyo <laughs> nyo. Whoa. Oh god. Let them trip over themselves. Yeah. 
They're not working together. The signal. Nyom. Oh. Yo, this whole sequence is so pretty. One second's delay. Okay, didn't get them. Did that hit a piece of the gap plant? Oh, that was the shuttle. Holy shit. Ah, 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 ah. Uh, that was close. That one moment of delay. Yo, Camille just psychically, uh, fucked with Sarah, and so did Katz. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Almost. Jared almost, huh? Yeah, that was a lot. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, she knows those people now. Please say something nice. What? Okay, good step. Okay, this is going a little bit less good. Okay! <laughs> Who are these children? What's up with that? Doesn't need a father figure any longer. Hey, that's what's up. Yeah, your real kids and your wife. How about that? I love them. So they should be such bros. All right, what's the news, Mirai? Wow, what a what a small personal portable computer. <laughs> how how technologically powerful. Sick. Fuck yes. <laughs> Sick. No. Wow. If this were any other show, I'd say this was death flagging uh, uh Bright, but I don't think he can die. God, if they killed Bright, I would I would riot. I would fucking riot. I'm gonna skip this. I, I love the ED, but I'm gonna skip it anyway for time. A boom. Okay, cool episode. I will tell you straight up right away in no uncertain terms that my favorite part of the episode is where we start getting like some force feelings between uh, uh, Sarah and everybody because we add these layers of shading and darkness to all of the characters that make them just so. I don't know, I find it really appealing looking. Um, there's there's an inherent appeal, I think, to the contrast and use of dark space throughout here. Uh, it's just, it's cool looking, seeing all these faces in deep shadow like this. Um, 
and even even the bits of the mech or or the small things all have that high black that like true black um it's, it's really cool I, I like the whole sequence a lot and beyond liking the sequence there's there's something to it too i mean it's cool the way the background fades out and vibes are felt and and heard and stuff but Camus uses his mental power to express something to Sarah, and then unintentionally, Katz does so as well. Like, boom, and this this hits Sarah and knocks her off her off center for like a moment, just a moment, just long enough to miss. How fucking interesting! And this is going to be a problem, right? Because uh, I think I think Jared, yeah, Jared is going to see this and be like hmm maybe i can't completely trust sarah anymore so he falls and i think the bottom like his foot yeah his his bottom leg of the gap plant gets shattered so he needs to at least go and get that fixed really cool circumstance and really scary right you know it gets the shuttle but we know that the boat is already left and that's cool i do i am glad that they showed us him getting out on the boat before evaporating the shuttle it would feel kind of cheap if we saw if it was like <gasps> Oh God, that was Char's shuttle. And then they were like, no, never mind. He left in a boat like two minutes ago and everything's fine. That we know that beforehand takes away some of that suspense, but it makes it feel less contrived. And I like that a lot. Two, two full romances come to fruition over the course of this episode, I think. You know, we start off the episode with fighting between Camus and Fa, and he's like, I wonder why we fight all the time. And it's just, it's just so utterly obvious precisely why they're fighting in this circumstance. Like you walked in and were like, you're fucking useless on the battlefield. Stay out of the way. <laughs> just, just crazy. Just crazy. And we end it with him being like, look, I'll apologize for all my faults, but for right now, we might die and we're not little kids. We should probably hang out, you know, and, and live like we're dying. And that's pretty cool. I think that's pretty fucking cool. Um, Captain, G Gaddy Captain is hilarious to have this guy in a position of actual authority now. I'm super excited to see him eventually die again. I think he's already dead, probably, so probably for a second time. And they get a random call from the mobile suit deck, and Yazan is literally running around in his goblet, throwing out, like, multi-million dollar pieces of machinery, because he feels like they suck. And he's right! They kind of suck. Like, there's... There's been no battle over the course of this of this show so far where hijacks have have made like a significant difference. I guess until this one because they got the big rocket beam cannon thing. But it also has to do with how does how does Yazan treat his subordinates and his peers? And the answer is not well at all, right? He may or may not know, he probably doesn't know that Sarah's preferred mech is one of these um one of these hijacks, right? He probably doesn't know, but Jared does. And so what we do by doing this is we set up this contrast between these two characters, and we set them, them up to be two people in very similar positions, heads of mech squadrons, right? Who do things in very different ways. Jared is becoming like a battle master, like a battlefield commander. He's working with his subordinates. He's formed a relationship with one of his subordinates, with Maurer. And he's utilizing um, um, Sarah as well, treating her like a person, treating her like an asset, and using her to the best of his ability and to the best of her ability. Uh, uh, on the other side, Yazan goes out with a couple of other mechs with him and literally just says, take care of the small fry, I got everything else. And then when approached with Jared attacking the Zeta, he doesn't work with him, he works against, them, against him. Why can't he leave it to me? And he rushes off to get there so that he can claim the prize classic stuff that happens in bad guy organizations it's one of the reasons the bad guys should win one of the best reasons that bad i'm sorry that bad guys should lose one of the best reasons that bad guys lose and good guys win is because bad guys are bad not not uh theoretically but being evil is, is selfishness is part and parcel to evilness and selfishness is not an effective way to run an organization because if everybody in that organization top to bottom is selfish Everybody's going to treat each other like shit, and the organization's going to function with a lot of incurred um, uh, uh, inefficiencies because nobody wants to work with each other, and they all hate each other. It's terrible, and we see it in the Tetons. They don't work together well, and now we get these two like captains who don't work together well, 
And it was it's sort of an as above, so below, because that's the way that it was going with Sirocco and, and Jamaican. They were butting heads at every instance. We see this top to bottom throughout the, the Tetons. People inside the Tetons are in it for different reasons, and they're not necessarily aligned. And because of that, they fight each other. They trip over each other. They cause problems. And I think that's really excellent to demonstrate here. Okay. So uh, Sarah's trying to keep him from doing it, and I'll throw you in jail, and he just is the snarkiest snark that has ever snarked. And immediately another incomplete battle doll pops up and, and is pulling Jared away. So Yazan just, just big fucking shit-eating grin. Um, I'll listen to you when you take down the Zeta. Fine, I'll take it down, bitch. Sure. And he goes by and slaps his glove. His long pilot suit glove just slaps Jared as he goes by with it. Smack! And we spend like, ish, 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 ish. I almost, I, you know, if this were a more comedic or more satirical show, we'd show this from like three separate angles, like, ish, 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 you know, but we don't. It's just a, an affront. It's just a moment of, of awfulness. And then he leaves with one last slap in the face, which is, I suggest you and your girlfriend go and get it on, bro, is basically what he says, right? <laughs> and then they, they literally do. <laughs> they literally legitimately do exactly that, which I think is hilarious. Um, and it's one of the things about Yazan, right? He is constantly a dick, and frequently he's right. <laughs> what an awful guy. I love him. I love him. The truth is, I came here for reasons, you know? Which is great. I do also like this line from Jared. I don't care about your circumstances. By eliminating the challenges you face, such circumstances can be altered. That's a cool, that's a cool idea. You are in control of yourself. You are in control of your circumstances and you can alter them through your own force of will. That's pretty interesting. It's still in that vein of hyper-individualist like idealism, but he's using it to bolster his team, his squad, his, his homies, which is pretty cool. And then she says the line we were waiting for. I was delighted that Gaddy Captain, Gaddy Captain invited me to this ship. Not because of Gaddy Captain, but because you were here, baby. It's cute. It's, it's cute. And she does this spin around thing. I thought they were going to make out as they were zooming down the thing, which is kind of, kind of romantic. But instead, they do a, a, a wall bang and a bang bang. That's pretty awesome, too. Okay, Mega Launcher, Battery Pack. And Maurer wants to come with him. And it's such a dash death flag. It's such a death flag. Okay, so you want to know why you get in fights with Fa, bro? Where's Petty, Petty Officer Fa? I think it's because you're harboring this dumbass bullshit in your heart. Where you turn around and you go, F -f 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 Fucking Fa, she's useless. Yeah, that's a great foundation for any kind of relationship, right? Oh yeah, that person's just totally useless there, eh? Idiot child but we do that right we understand oh speaking of understanding hey cats don't go out unless somebody tells you to <laughs> immediately goes out when nobody told them to oh my god i just i just can't okay conversation here you gotta take over again everybody's freaking out yes but also people will hate them for it pretty cool and also you need to take control once more and here's a letter for bright it's super cool Whoosh, and we take off. And, and the takeoff is cool. Um, and we move into battle sequences. Uh, chasing down the Mark II with Emma in it. Lots of conversations. Choices made by Quattro, which are really important. Sick henshines from the Gap plant um, in multiple places that I thought were really cool. But as I said before, the coolest sequence to me is the dark sequence where there's stuff going on. We're introduced to this mega cannon that requires two hijacks to operate, and I assume, I really do assume this, and I, I, I'm sorry for saying so, I assume that this is mostly a contrivance to get Mauer into battle so that she can die um, in an interesting way. And possibly, if I were writing this, I think I would have Yazan be semi-responsible for Mauer's death, or at least have it circumstantially so that Jared could blame Yazan for Mauer's death. That's what I would do, because that would be fucking sick, and it would really bolster their rivalry. This whole sequence where Sarah, like, puts on the giant gun thing is rad. I like it a lot. 
this is my favorite moment in it because it's just, I mean, it looks like th two headphone ports, but immediately I understand that it's like locking in power generation stuff, and that's fucking cool. Super duper cool. Okay, and we get bad feelings, bad vibes, and cool Gunplot stuff, yay. This henshin is rad, actually. Just fully turn around mid-space. Katz comes out because he felt something. Everybody felt something. Defensive line collapsing. Boats in the air. Crazy psychic disturbances time. Super duper cool. They literally trip over each other to get to the Gundam and cause a huge problem. We get the moment. We get the choice. Jared fires the thing. Yazan's in the line of fire. And they take the shot. But they are interrupted a couple of times by a couple of different psychic disturbances. And Sarah does not take the whole shot. And fails. She hits the shuttle and doesn't hit the uh, doesn't hit the Zeta. Also, I will just note this because I think it's hilarious. This moment where Gaddy Captain just just shakes his fist in anger. It's almost God. He's like a character from The Simpsons or something. I don't I don't get why he's. <laughs> What's wrong with your skin, dude? Why are you a character from a show that only has one tone of yellow? Okay, so they talk- I don't even know why he raises his hand here, this is- it's some- some dumb shit to do that. Fucking idiot. Yes, yes. We don't really show the kiss, either. It looks like he kisses her on the forehead. Am I wrong? Like, that's- this is where her eye line is, right? And that's where his lips go? Look at- look. Okay, so, here's the hair bump. This is the hair bump, right? This is where the, the bump in her hair near her temples would be, right? That's, there's the bump there. So the bump is right here. This is the hair bump. So her temple is right here, and his lips go in right here. He kisses her right there. And then he got, he's got this Giga Chad look on his face, this smile like, yeah. Yeah. All right, Camille. All right, big man. Why did we bring these children aboard? Are they potential new types? Or is he just trying to bring children? I don't understand. What's the reason for that? I don't know. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go to Sakaburu. Uh, fucking yawns. God. I'm going to go to Sakaburu. There's only one cut. It's a big battle sequence, and I don't think it's the coolest thing ever, so I'm just going to skip it. Okay? Okay. Cool. And that'll be, I think that's it for episode 27, Rendezvous with Char. Char's back, baby. He's back on board. And uh, some romance has been brewing. Very cool. Okay, so here's the way that I'm going to do today's videos. Um, I'm going to separate them into individual episodes. And um, that's it. I'm just going to separate them into individual episodes. So for now, I'm going to end this, this video and this episode and uh, uh, call it here. Probably going to go and eat something. And then I will come back and I will record another episode and then probably another episode and then we'll see. Um, I'll, I'll do at least two separate episodes. Um, and then if I want to or end up doing more, then I'll do more. But for now, that's it for episode 27 of Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in a bit in the next episode uh, to watch episode 28. See you there. Peace.